Mm. Lawrence, in just 16 fights, you're British, Commonwealth, European, and now you're champion oh, yeah. of the world. That's mad, isn't it? Tell us. Tell us. Tell us how you're feeling, please. <laughs> no, it's crazy. Like, obviously, I'm. I feel happy. I feel blessed. Uh, it's it's surreal. You know, what I mean, I was um, really confident, really calm throughout the week. Uh, I want to take the time to just thank my mum, thank my dad, who's in the building right now. Um, thank Eddie Hearn, thank um, AJ Two Five Eight. Uh, Omar, I know you're watching this. PLT, Samir, everyone, just, everyone that supported me from the beginning, all my boys, Duncan, I, I, I don't even know that. Like, obviously, it's amazing to um, be able to put like an exclamation mark on my life with a world title. And I just want to say, if you believe anything in this life you want, you can get. Penny boys. You said the whole week exactly what you were going to do, and I think sometimes uh, confidence can be confused with arrogance. Were there any nerves or any self-doubt at all that you didn't belong on this stage? No, absolutely none. I mean, Shane and the, everyone were back you in the back. I'm very calm throughout the whole week. I'm at the back. And the thing is, you can lie to everyone, put on a brave front, but you have to go home and live with yourself. And then that's when you know how you feel. I've been really calm all week. Um, and, yeah, that's it, really an experienced campaigner, a former world champion. Can you just talk us through the fight and how it went and did it go the way that you thought it would? Um, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? Um, it did. Um, I have to thank um, Shane for the game plan. Uh, I was very um, sure I was going to get to him. However, he just reminded me not to rush. I've got the power to knock anyone out, so just spend the first... I don't want to say too much about the game plan, but it went exactly to plan. I, I said I'd get it done within between five to eight and um, I'm happy to have got it done. And throughout the whole thing, all I was thinking was one thing. Four years ago, Eddie Hearn, or four or five years ago, Eddie Hearn saw a boy from Hackney and said to him, if you win a world title, I'm going to get you a gold sky dweller. And every <laughs> single moment in that ring, that's all I was thinking. I was thinking for all my Olympians, everyone, that gold sky dweller is coming. And then he said, he'll get me another one when I unify. OK, I mean, he's, got a, he's looking a bit shifty. I'll come to him in a sec. Just one point. In the past, you've been an easy target for criticism. You've been labelled boring, a hugger. Uh, some of that criticism from the uh, Chamberlain fight, the Askin fight, was levelled at you. That seems a thing of the past now. What is the big factor in that? Um, it's a lot of things. It's experience as well. I'm um, growing into myself as a boxer, um, working with Shane. Obviously, I, I want to shout out Brian Ashaughnessy as well, who's my first trainer and, and helped me turn and pro. Barry Robinson um, as well. So I just want to um, say that the, it's been a process. And obviously, joining with Shane, one of the main things he works on is mindset. And he's every day in the gym with the jokes, with the seriousness. It's just constantly reminding me and even just telling me I can do it. I believe in myself, but having someone else uh, in your corner telling you, turn the shot over, believe, etc., etc. And two times in a row, he said to me, turn it on this round. And both times, I've got rid of them. So I'm happy. Stay there, because I will come back to you on the future. Eddie Hearn, it's cost you a little bit of money tonight, obviously, that we've just been told, but your reaction, you've got a new world champion in your uh, stable, and you must be very, very proud for staying, I don't know, staying loyal and backing Lawrence Coley in just 16 fights. He, he's done everything that he said he would do. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Sky Dwellers normally come for the unification, but we'll go to, we'll go to the jewellers this week. Right, but that was one, one of... <laughs> the great performances to win a world title. Christoph Glowacki is a two-time world champion. You know, he's a top five cruiserweight in the world, super experienced. You know, sometimes he's had criticism, but he's had, you know, he's been a novice. And tonight he stepped in with 15 fights, you know, and we, we wondered, you know, we were speaking in the bubble. He's walked around with so much confidence all week. You just wonder when you step up to that elite level, are you good enough? My goodness, was he good enough? Not just good enough, an absolute masterclass. The jab, the footwork, the right hand, you know, the work on the inside, the spinning off. That was a good enough performance to be any cruiserweight in the division. And that's what we want to do now. We don't want to muck around. We want to go straight for all the titles and unify the division and then move up to heavyweight. He's got scary power, but he used to be all power. Now he's got the jab, he's got the movement, he's got, he's got the knowledge up here. Shane's done a tremendous job. And just while we're here, let's put it into perspective. You know, not so long ago, he was a young man in McDonald's working at Victoria Station. You know, he was overweight, didn't know where he was going. And in 2012, he watched Usain Bolt and Anthony Joshua win gold at the London Olympics. They inspired him to try and change his life, right? He left that job. He chased his dream in boxing. He, he got to his own Olympics in the Rio. And then he won the British, the Commonwealth, the European Championship. Tonight, he wins the World Championship. This is an incredible story. This sounds like a story I'd make up. 
But this is a true story, and this is a real inspiration to young kids today. Like he said, if you believe in yourself, you can do it. Shout out to Anthony and Joshua 258. They've got their first world champion themselves. For us, we saw a young kid with a load of talent, and we all believe when we sat down, he'd become a world champion. Tonight, he made it happen. I'm super proud of him. Yeah, Akoli's out the cage. I just, I just, Akoli's out the cage, yeah, most definitely. I just want to ask you about the future then. Um, so much has been made about the eventual step up to heavyweight, but is this cruiserweight for now and you want to unify the division before you move up? Or if the big names come, is it heavyweight next? Yeah, definitely. But I feel like um, I would like to fight someone like Bradis next. I think out of the champions, Bradis is the one that I would most like to go in next with. That will be unified in 17 fights and 42 um, career fights. So I think... Um, Braid, obviously, any champion that Eddie can get, but the one I'll be looking for is Bradis. Brilliant. I just want to give the final word to you. If you want to, um, yeah, I just I know you would have loved to have won that in front of your fans tonight. You had a few fans here in December, but everyone back home will be watching. Um, have you got a message for everyone? Just thank you so much for the support. Um, there was a lot of people that you know told me I could do it. That prayed for me today. I heard all your um, prayers and uh, and it came through. And the people that said no, hopefully I'm turning them to believers. There's a guy I want to shout out. His name's Dwyer. Uh, he's a guy on YouTube. Um, he told me I couldn't do it, um, but I did. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Enjoy it. Thank you.